This week on your PI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. It's Cree LEDs. That's Let's right. Ada, what is Cree LEDs? What do they make? What do they do? Well, they make gigantic bright LEDs. They're also known for uh, Cree lighting, makes finished LED lighting structures and lamps. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about, I'm going to get the part number correct. It's the X Lamp XP G3 Photofill Select LEDs. That's the okay. XP G3. Um, so these are um, LEDs. I love the name Photofill. I mean, that's a cool, cool name. That's what I, they call me when I take photos. Yes, they photo, call me, Photofill. They call me photo uh, so Photofill LEDs are designed for horticulture. They're meant for grow lights, and they're specifically tuned um, for the light frequencies that plants respond to best. Because if you are going to be using um, LEDs to uh, so LED grow lights, it's LED grow lights. But if you're using LEDs to grow plants i mean of course the sun is free but in some cases maybe you can't but the sun stuff. has all sorts of extra wavelengths maybe you don't need those maybe you don't need them and so in this case uh you can get binned leds um that are specifically designed for led grow lights now you might be thinking wait Cree, those are That's like the evil characters from the marvel cinematic universe that are technologically advanced and they have blue skin no uh, this is uh, Cree LED, and they're you know well known. I've, I've definitely used Cree LEDs multiple times. They're famous for really really high quality LEDs that last a very long time, um, are binned, and like very very bright and customizable. And um, they they're very very good for indoor white lighting especially. Um, but they also do uh, different LED colors. You know, you're often not going to use Cree LEDs for like little indicators. You're going to use them when you want illumination, like you want a lot of light to flood uh, something, not just notify you. Um, so for example, you know, these are some of the LEDs they have. This is uh, X-Lamp series, um, which is like the package available in just a blue color um, with a typical uh, frequency range of uh, 451, which is uh, blue. So maybe, I don't know, maybe the Cree future science fiction race found these leds they were so blue turned them blue and then this is what hot sound started yeah they started fighting the marbles okay but anyways um back to uh horticulture leds so um this series of leds are designed for you know whenever using um leds to assist or to be the primary light source for plants um they've made leds before that people use a lot of people just use kind of like these generic leds um uh not specified for uh, you would use the frequency ranges that, and I'll mention it later, you know, which frequencies, but they weren't tuned specifically for like the different ratios of red, green, and blue, whereas these LEDs are tuned specifically for that. And the reason that's useful and what people use Cree LEDs for is they're binned. Um, that's like, they're specified and you're going to get the specification because when you're making an LED, you know, you have the P and the N type of doped silicon material, you put them together, and in that um, boundary where the P type and the N type go, when the uh, electrons and holes pass through, um, you know they they jump down from one level to another level, and they emit that power as light. And you can tune and tweak that frequency that they emit. So, like the first LEDs used uh, doped silicon with um, aluminum gallium arsenide, or maybe it was a gallium phosphide. I don't remember. And so you have red LEDs and those were the, the first ones. And then as people try different materials um, like uh, gallium 3-phosphide or sorry, uh, aluminum gallium indium phosphide, you could get greens or zinc uh, selenide or in GAN N, indium gallium nitride, you could get violets and ultraviolet. So you get different frequencies. But in general, when you are buying a red LED and you're paying you know a penny or two for a red LED, you're gonna get something you, know, you see here the lambda, the wavelength is between, yeah, about 600 to 700 nanometers. It's not going to be precise and you're not going to get matching between the LEDs. You're going to get something approximate. And that's why it's so cheap, right? You don't, you know, you're not paying for high precision. You just want something where the red LED on your microcontroller board or your, your indicator just lights up and it's close enough. Um, and so a lot of low cost LEDs, even ones that are illuminating, they're not going to be matched. Like you're going to get whatever brightness and whatever came off of that disc when they diced up um, that silicon, the, the PN junction, you're going to get whatever came off of that plate and each plate might be a little bit different and that's kind of your problem. Um, 
when you have plants and you know you've got these um green leaves and they're absorbing the light and uh they're using that light to convert the carbon dioxide um into uh oxygen it also takes uh you know nutrients from the soil water and that you know using all the uh, hydrocarbons and the light to convert them um turns it into energy that the plant can use and then when maybe we eat in those cases, um, the frequency of light that's coming from the sun, now the sun happens to be a pretty a, a broad spectrum, but not every frequency is used. There's certain frequencies that are absorbed um, much better. So you can see, you know, I was kind of reading about this on Wikipedia. Because I sort of assumed that you want the, the widest uh, band light, but actually you don't. You sort of want this, you want like a non-linear wave where it's kind of centered around the visible spectrum, um, but it's not perfectly linear. And so like you kind of want a lot of red, and you want blue and then green is useful but it's not like the most and so you know a lot of people use just red and blue light and so you can see the LED light panel on the top right there from a, a NASA experiment so you can see space is becoming important here this is when we the, the Cree aliens race learned about this yes. they found our potato plants Sorry. that's right um and they they love these Cree LEDs um but the the amount of radiation the frequency of the radiation is important and it does affect um, how the plant grows and different plants have different uh, radiation. And like, you know, if you have the sun again, it's free, who cares? But if you're going to be paying for the electricity for these lights and you have to pay for the LEDs, you want to get the most bang for your buck. You want to get the most efficient transmission of electrical energy into uh, photonic energy that will be absorbed and then turned into plant energy, whether that's corn or flowers or basil what have you um and there's a lot of papers actually there's there's a whole um journal called quarter science and there was like dozens of articles in it about uh different leds and they they tested all the different um frequencies and ratios between the leds uh and brightnesses and what types to try to tune it because there's actually a lot there's a lot of investment in it because a lot of people are moving from uh halide lamps or fluorescent lights to leds because you don't have to change the bulbs they don't burn out they don't really dim over time um they're a little bit more expensive but like once you buy them you're set and they run for you know a decade or plus um led lights they're not you know they don't last forever forever but they last a lot longer than an incandescent bulb um so the photofill select leds have red uh and blue and then you can tweak the amount of green and you'd also i guess add a, a separate photo red led um, if necessary. And so you don't actually want white, like a pure white color. Um, you actually want this kind of ratio mix of green and blue. And, um, you know, to be honest, I, I de delved into this for a few hours, but it, you can go on for years and study this. And I'm assuming that um, Cree and their wisdom uh, figured out the exact ratios that most people are interested in. And so these are the distributions they have of the um, different lights. So there's three versions, two, 2.5 and three. Um, and they basically it looks like there's a peak about like, you know, four, 450 nanometers. Um, and that's where you're going to get more or less um, relative radiant light compared to um, the, the more blue ratio. Um, so this is uh, the order codes. So you're going to get um, the, the green blue ratio, how much green versus blue. Um, some plants, I guess, do better with more green. You know, again, you're when you buy two, three cent LEDs, it's called green. They're going to give you the material. You're going to get it somewhere within, you know, the the um, the brightness that you think it is. When you buy Cree LEDs, what you're paying for is that guarantee that um, you're going to get the exact frequency and the exact power output that's going to match. It's a little bit more expensive, but then you don't have to go back and rework it when the LED dies because the Cree LEDs are just designed to last a lot longer. Um, and deal with um, the thermal load of lighting a huge grow light. Um, and uh, second, they're gonna get the binning that you're expecting and this this ratio is going to be precise. And the way they do it, of course, is they make all the LEDs and they test them and then they sort the LEDs out. So, um, you know, rather than trying to control the doping, which they do also, they'll bin them after manufacture. And so you'll get everything on the reel is going to be the same match. Um, these LEDs are are very bright. You'll notice under the DC forward current, um, it's two amps, right? That's the maximum uh, current range. So these are very small and they're extremely bright. Um, definitely do not look into them with the remaining eye you have. 
um, then forward voltage of, you know, it says if you run at about a, a watt, it's about three volts. So you'll definitely need a uh, LED driving current uh, management system. You can't just like put a resistor on them. It's it's two amps. It's, you're going to want, you know, buck converters and you probably want to have them all in series. So maybe you boost it and have a very high voltage so you can control the current going through a string of LEDs. Um, because you're going to be pushing two amps through them, there's also a very specific footprint for the copper um, and how you want the paste uh, to be deposited. You know, there's also a lot written about how to design uh, products using these LEDs. They're very small for the amount of power going through them. Aluminum-backed LEDs are strongly recommended. Uh, you might need heat sinking. Um, and, you know, depending on how big your heat sink, you might even need active cooling. So you might need a fan, not a very powerful fan, not as powerful as you need for HID lights, um, but definitely something to kind of move the air through. Because even though LEDs last a very, very long time, they, uh, the, you know, the bonding wires in the substrate won't last if it's uh, overheated too much. Available on Digigay. That's right. They're in stock. All the different bins, but this is the one we picked out. Um, and I'll just show it on the overhead to show you how small it is. Um, it's a very small LED, so think about putting two amps through that. It's going to get really hot. Uh, so you're going to definitely have to think about how you're going to heat sink this. Don't don't just plop it on a PCB and think you're going to be happy. You're going to be it's you know it'll it'll actually get so hot it might desolder itself. And there's a video, and then we'll wrap up by NMPI. Hi, my name is Derek Miller. I'm the R&D Applications Group Manager here at Cree LED. Here, you're looking at our new J-Series 3-volt G-Class LED optimized for horticultural lighting that we call Photofill Select. In this LED, we are able to optimize the phosphor mixture so that you can pair it with our XPGDS Photo Red to get the highest efficiency horticultural LED solution available now. This fixture behind me has 1,152 Photofill Select mid-power LEDs mixed with 48 XPGDS high-power Photo Red LEDs. In this fixture, we were able to demonstrate up to 3.25 PPF per watt efficiency. This fixture has a two-channel tunable solution so you can get exactly the amount of red that your plants need. Our Photofill Select LEDs are available in two different recipes, with both a high green to blue ratio and a low green to blue ratio. By selecting the two different recipes of green to blue ratios, you can mix and match to get exactly the spectrum that you want.